Hi everyone, today is Thursday, March 2nd, 2017. My name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist with the National Weather Service. This briefing is going to look at climatic conditions that brought Box Elder County to experience a great deal of field flooding and then maybe some ideas on why and then what we're going to do on our end as far as the weather service. But we'll start with precipitation. And these are the anomalies, meaning did you get more or did you get less precip in your area? And our area is in that circle, that black circle. And this map is kind of large, but this was some of the best data we had as far as aerial extent of precipitation. And we look at December, what we see are those green areas are about two to three hundred percent of average and then the purple area is about three to four hundred percent of average and you can see there's parts of northern Utah that hit up to four hundred percent precipitation while some of the other areas were in the two to three hundred percent range so two to three to four times the amount of precip in December and then we look at January and really we're up around four times the amount of precip four hundred percent of average and then you look at February again four 100% average, some areas about 300%, a little less, about 200%, but nonetheless, two to three in some areas, four times the amount of precipitation in northern Utah. This is a different way to look at this. When you look at that blue area and you look at where that dot was blinking, below that is the range of precipitation that we usually get at Logan City. This is the radio station. It's a climate station that's run by the National Weather Service. And you should be getting about three to five inches of precipitation cumulative up to this point. That's the range of five, five, fifth percent to 95th percentile. Meaning if you add it up, you know, you kind of ranked all the years dating back to 1956. The drier ones would be fifth percentile. The wettest would be up around 95th percentile. And we're so above out of that range. You know, like I said, you should be about three to five inches. We're at 10 inches of precip in Logan. And that's just one illustration, one point that shows just how much precipitation we've had up to this point. When you look at snowpack, these graphs on the y-axis show snow water equivalent or water in the snowpack. Time is on the bottom from October 1st for a full year. The Navy line is average. The teal line is 2005, the red line is 2011, and the green line is current year 2017. And when I made this graph, I asked the program to give me the two biggest years we've ever had at Tony Grove Lake, which is a mountain station east of Logan. And we're at 161 percent of median in the mountains to the east of Logan, which is above 2011 and above 2005. When you look at the Little Bear, which is a lower elevation station in the Cache, the mountains near uh, Cache Valley, 180% of median, well above 2011 and 2005 and average. When you move over to Ben Loban Peak, this area is by snow base and ski area, but a good indicator for mountain snowpack on northern Utah Wasatch Mountains, 172% of median, well above 2005, 2011 and average. Ben Loman Trail is a lower elevation and you see the lines a little more jagged on the green line. That's because the snow melted uh, up to two to three inches. We had 3.2 inches of melt when it got warm in February off of this low elevation and that melt went somewhere and it went into the Cache Valley and it went into uh, areas of the Box Elder County uh, Valley areas. So when we talk about the geography I'd like you to look at, this is a Google Earth image of, here's Box Elder County. The Malad River is to the west, the, Bo the Bear River is to the east, and you can see a narrowing of the canyon uh, near Bear Hollow. And I'm pretty sure that is a good indicator of why Box Elder County has had more flooding than Cache County, because when you look at the two, they both had the same temperature, they both had the same precip, roughly. They both have uh, uh, sediment uh, that's clay soils that's from uh, lake sediments from Bonneville Lake from historic long time ago but the clay soils don't allow water to infiltrate so when you look precip similar temperature similar and soils are similar what's the difference and my feeling is that narrowing of the canyon 
when we melted during February, when we had that warm up really through about two weeks of February, it was it was quite warm for that time, melted snow up to three inches or more in some of the mountain areas. Plus we had rain on all of these areas. That all came off of the mountains and it infiltrated into the pore spaces that was already there. Now we've got saturated soils. Now we're flooding the fields. And if you look from north to south, the gradient is really quite low. It doesn't allow water to flow very fast, so we're going to have this. Now we've got saturated soils in northern Utah. What will occur if we warm up again or we get a significant rain event is we're going to have additional flooding. And this could continue until June, perhaps. If we dry out, if we don't see any more storms and we don't see any more rain and we have temperatures about average, this flood threat will go away, but we don't know that. And we see a storm, we see a warm up on this weekend. We also see a storm on Monday. Now, the National Weather Service is go are going to issue aerial flood warnings when we get a warm up or we get a rain event. Even though there's some standing water in a lot of these places, we don't want to have a warning out until June. So what we're going to do is when it warms up or we get a significant melt off or rain event, we're going to issue a warning for this these areas. And then when it declines, we're going to drop the warning and then monitor the conditions all the way out until, you know, the next issue is the spring snowmelt runoff with these really big snowpacks. But that's another story. This is valley flooding that we're dealing with right now. So if I can do anything else for you, there's my contact info. There's my email. I've been working with Box Elder County, with the sheriff, with the emergency manager, with the public works guys with the engineers and they're doing I think an exceptional job for the conditions they were dealt three to four times the amount of precip these incredible warm-ups when you talk to some of the farmers they've not seen this this amount of flooding just due to the conditions so we'll go from there give me a call if I can do anything for you until the next round I appreciate taking the time to listen to this and hopefully we're gonna dry out thank you